recognizable guitar tunes throughout rock history. This is a fantastic lesson for uh, beginning bass players. Uh, what this is going to do, instead of playing the same song or trying to get that same, you know, entire song over and over again, what you're going to be doing here is you're going to be getting, um, playing these different songs. You're going to be going to different places on the fretboard, learning different techniques, different timings even. And the great thing is all these songs parts are probably very, very familiar to you, so you're not going to have to worry about the timings too much and all that. You're going to be able to play them just from memory. Um, might be a little bit less monotonous than, you know, sticking with trying to learn entire songs. This way you're learning lots of different things in a really compact amount of time. So uh, let's roll right into it. Um, but before I do, don't forget, I have some uh, free lessons right down in a little YouTube clicker box right down there if you want to get some. There's three of them just for you. They're free. They're not on YouTube at all. I am Finbar, Finbar Bass. You can always subscribe to my little channel if you feel like it, get more tutorials. And uh, other than that, let's get into this one. I'm gonna keep doing that. All right, so the first one I played for you there was Aqualung, of course, by the fantastic, amazing, and wonderful band, Jethro Tull. <laughs> what you're gonna do there is you're gonna start with your ring finger on the uh, seventh fret of the G string. Then you're gonna move down to the fifth fret of the D string. All right. And then you're gonna hit the um, eighth fret of the D string so far. And then go back up to the fifth fret of the um, fifth fret of the G string. Sixth fret and then fifth fret of the G string. It's that simple. I'll play it really slow. <clears throat> Incidentally, uh, some of these songs, the bass doesn't play the part that I played, but still for tutorial purposes and for learning, um, it's fantastic to play them on bass. And, and if you're, you know, with a band, throw them in anyway on top of the, what the guitar player is playing. Just like that. <clears throat> The second one I played for you there was uh, Smoke on the Water, of course. Probably one of the most recognizable riffs ever in music history. Right, just like that. What you're gonna do there is you're gonna have your, uh, you're gonna hit the third fret of the E string, followed by the sixth fret of the E string. And then you're gonna hit the third fret of the A string. All right, it's that simple. You can probably figure out the rest right from there, right? <clears throat> then you're going to hit the uh, third fret of the E, sixth fret of the E, and then you're going to actually hit the the um, fourth fret of the uh, A string this time, followed by the third fret. So slowly. All right? And then you're going to repeat this part. Just like that. And then you're gonna go back down to the um, sixth fret of the E and then to the third fret of the E. And of course, you could always, um, if you wanted to, you're just, you know, playing around at home and you wanna throw in some extra notes. Whoops. And if you kind of want to make it sort of more like what the guitar is playing there, you can do these little chords. As I said, I'm going to be throwing in, as, as the, through the ages, I'm going to throw in a little bit more technique to each one of these songs. And um, if you learn them all in the progression that I'm showing them to you, you're going to be learning more and more stuff. So <clears throat> uh, if you want to play this like the guitar, you're going to be playing some chords here, just like, you know, chords are played on the guitar. It basically just means that two notes are ringing out at the same time. So what you're going to be doing here is you're going to be placing your finger, and you could either do this with two fingers or you could borrow it with one finger on the um, fifth fret 
of the A string and the D string both. See how that sounds? That's barred and that's with two fingers. You're gonna slide that up then, or don't actually slide it, but play that, and then play the um, on the eighth frets of the same strings, A and the D string. You're gonna be keeping the same pattern, barring the two middle strings, right? Uh, just in different places on the fretboard, right? So <clears throat> you got the uh, uh, fifth fret of the A and the D, then you're gonna go up to the eighth fret, then the tenth fret. Right? And you can probably figure out from there. Whoops. I obviously can't. Ha! And what that is there is you're on the 11th fret to the 10th. Just like that. And if you want this to sound really menacing, you can throw in the, uh, the E string as well. And what you're going to do there is, this is going to be a power chord, right where you were barring the, on the fifth fret, the, um, the A string and the D string, move up two frets and then over to the E string, right? Put your pointer finger on that, and then you're going to hold your index finger on the A string, and your little pinky finger on the D string. See that? You can play it just like that. It's really the same thing as you're playing here, but you're adding the E string. Just like that. Okay, now the next part that I showed you was Money from Pink Floyd. Awesome song. Uh, Again, different, little bit of a different twist in here. This is not in 4-4 time signature. Um, it's actually in 7. So if you count it out, you're going to be counting 7 instead of counting 4. Now, what's great about this song is it's so probably so familiar to you. You don't even have to worry about that 7 time, 4 time stuff. Just go ahead and play it and um, you'll know it so well that you'll be able to play it regardless of the fact that it's in a different time signature. But it's nice to play different time signatures. It makes it a little bit more interesting and fun and not as monotonous. So what you're going to do for this is you're going to put your um, pinky finger, I'm sorry, your uh, pointer finger on the um, second fret of the, uh, of the A string and then hop up to the um, fourth fret for the G string and also the D string and then back to the second fret of the A string. So remember, when we were doing Smoke on the Water, I showed you what a little uh, power chord might look like. <clears throat> now, that's really a chord, what you're playing there, except you're not playing it as a chord, you're playing it more staccato. Okay? Then you're gonna go to the second fret of the E, followed by the uh, fifth fret of the E, second fret of the A, fifth fret of the A, and that's it. So if this was going to be done in um, normal 4-4 time, it'd be more something akin to something like this. See, there's another note throat, thrown in there to set it up for the 4-4 uh, time. <clears throat> But anyway, that's about it. It's that simple. Um, play it slowly as it's played in a song. I'm playing it, probably playing it a little bit faster there. <clears throat> okay, so for the next one, Beat It by Michael Jackson. Going up a little bit ahead in time there. What we're adding here, additional little techniques, is, well, this is a faster song. Um, so it's going to get your fingers playing a little bit faster. Um, also, there's going to be some uh, ghost notes. And what a ghost note is, is you're not actually playing the note you're putting your finger where the note would be but you're not pressing down you're holding your finger a little bit higher up still on the string and you're and you're actually plucking with your fingers but it's giving that kind of sound as opposed to you're not actually hearing the note you're actually just hearing a little click 
and that's a that's what makes a lot of songs sound as funky as they do but anyway what you're gonna do here is you're gonna um, be playing on the open E third fret of the E second fret of the A then you're gonna go all the way up to the fifth fret of the D and second fret of the D See that right there? I played a little ghost note at the end there. So what I did was I lifted my hand a little bit off that E note, or the uh, second fret of the D, and I plucked it, but I was not pressing down here. Let me show you that a little, a little bit slower. Just like that. And then what you're going to do, this also incorporates a technique called a hammer-on. <clears throat> and what you're going to do there is you're going to actually pluck the second fret of the uh, D string. And then you're going to play the fourth fret of the D string, but you're not actually going to pluck it again. You're going to hammer on with that um, third finger. That's the sound you want. See that? What that looks like, I plucked the second fret but not the fourth fret Oops. just like that then what you're going to do is you're going to go back to the second fret of the d and then you're going to play two open notes on the uh, d string ghost note hammer on just like that Okay, the next one in the series that I showed you is uh, Come Out and Play by The Offspring. It's a really super, super fun song. Um, what this incorporates in it, it's going to have a hammer on in it, like I just showed you on the Michael Jackson Beat It. But it's also going to have a slide, and it's also very quick. And it has a sweet sort of, um, I don't know, I would think of it like a kind of a Middle Eastern feel to it, or almost like a, like a, um, like a gypsy sound to it. But um, So I'm you're going to start with your... Start this with your middle finger, okay, on the ninth fret of the D string, and you're going to hammer on with your third finger, your ring, your ring finger, onto the tenth fret of that same string. All right, see that? So obviously I'm not actually plucking that ninth fret, I am just hammering on, and the sound is being made because this third finger of mine is rushing down and slamming on that string right there. See that? Okay, then you're going to be playing the um, eighth fret of the G string, then the ninth fret of the G string. Now you're going to hit that ninth fret of the G string, and then you are going to slide up to the eleventh and slide back down to the ninth. So if I do it slowly, see that? Now that might seem like that kills your finger at first, but you'll develop more calluses, or is it callusi? I don't know. Ha! Anyway, your fingers will uh, get tougher, and it'll be a lot easier for you after a while. <laughs> and then you're gonna um, kind of go back down to where uh, you just were. You're gonna go to the eighth fret of the G, 10th fret of the uh, D, so. And then you're gonna go to the ninth fret of the uh, D, right? So it's going to look like this. I'll just do the whole thing slowly. And then you're going to hit the um, the ninth fret again of the uh, D string, followed by the 10th and the 9th. Just like that. All right, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, fantastic little pieces of songs uh, with lots of different techniques. And then little graduated techniques to uh, get you playing a lot smoother and get your fingers around the board and develop some finger strength and some accuracy and some power. That's right, power! Anyway, um, please click the link below if you want some more free bass lessons. Um, there's three on there, everything from beginner all the way to advanced. Um, I'm Finbar, Finbar Bass. You can click on my little uh, YouTube uh, channel if you want to subscribe. And um, have fun with those. I know you will.